I'm Barb Ritz Ross, and behind me is Judy Spelberstead. I am an abstract artist, and Judy is a pastel artist. So we have very different kind of styles, but today I'm going to take you first take you on a tour of my studio. So this is it. Um, some of my artwork supplies, acrylic paints, drawing material, watercolors, oil paints, and brushes, and uh, materials that I use for my paintings, for scraping, for scratching, for flattening, for all kinds of stuff, pencils. And uh, this here is my thinking corner. <laughs> this is where I um, analyze my work. I sit here and I look at it from afar for several days to figure out what, how to, how to finish it, how, what it needs, what, why am I not happy with it. So um, this is my library of art books. Research, um, other supplies, uh, glues, all different kinds of glues, mediums, uh, let's see, mica flakes, kinds of stuff. This is all work that I've done and other people have done. So these are artists. This is my daughter's painting that still inspires me. Um, this is a um, something that I do when I'm in between paintings and uh, need to take a break. I, I glue these things together. These are called uh, assemblages. Um, this is a big tool of mine. A uh, color wheel. That's how I get started on my paintings. And of course, music. First thing I do when I come into the studio is put music on. Well, I won't do that today because I'm a little distracted, but that's what I do when I dance and relax. So, the first thing I'm going to do is get explain my process. And we'll look at this painting, which is the final version. Uh, and this is called Let's Stay Connected. This is one of my pieces that I've done during this COVID-19 uh, period, and um, I'll go through how it got started. This is when I first layer painting, uh, paint on, uh, this is paper, by the way. It's Arches paper, and um, I like to use paper because as you'll see, I worked on my table first and have a lot of, um, like, sometimes I use collage, sometimes I use stencils, sometimes I use crayon, and it's much easier to work on a surface. Um, a lot of people ask, you know, not all your paintings are on canvas. I do do canvas paintings, like this is on a canvas. But um, it's harder to, because it's flexible, it's harder to do stenciling and uh, collage. Anyway, this is the first layering of paint. This is what this painting looked like when I first got started. And uh, you'll see uh, I make lots of marks on my paintings as well. Sometimes I cover them and sometimes I don't. I go in, this is a little stencil area here. The next layer is a little bit more shapes. Um, I have made, these are um, stencils that I've made myself. Let me show you what that looks like. So I cut it out of another piece of paper and that's pretty much how I got that shape going. So the process here is, oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a, Judy, can you ask the question of that um, Veronica asked? Okay, Veronica. Veronica's my daughter, and uh, I was asking, because this is not a live stream, 
uh, video that um, I would curious to know what other people would be asking me. So Veronica came up with this wonderful question. And the question is, what happened between the second phase, which is more green and yellow dominant, and the final? Why did you commit to that beautiful dark blue? So this is... And the okay. second part of that question, do you want me to ask? Yeah. Is, do you ever feel regret when you make big decisions like that and wish you could change it back? And if so, how do you deal with that feeling? Yeah. Okay. It's a great question. So, what happened with this painting? This is what it looked like. And um, I knew it wasn't finished, or there was something about this painting that was not working for me. Uh, and, you know, I liked a lot of the parts of this painting. I, I love this little part here because of the intrigue of the colors. But I knew that as a whole, this painting wasn't working. So I sent this, this painting. I have a little group of friends, critique uh, friends, uh, artists, and Judy's one of them, and Ralph Chermak and Pat Stolarski, three artists that I send my work to when I'm really confused and thinking, why doesn't this work? And um, they said that basically there was a lot going on in this painting and there were mul multiple focal points and it seemed to be a couple of conversations going. There's this conversation here and this one here and maybe they were both striving for attention. So I went back to work and Veronica was asking, well, what happened to all this yellow? This was kind of fun to look at. And when I look at your final painting, I don't see that yellow anymore. And I made a decision to keep this and this little conversation as being the focal point. And I had to get rid of the other parts, even though I loved them. And yes, they were very difficult to get rid of. But I needed to do that to make these stand out more. And then I took these shapes and connected them because a lot of my work is about connection. And um, because I spend so much time in the studio by myself, I always have this need for things to connect and relate to each other. And this COVID-19 thing had made me feel like there are things going on with all of us where we need to connect with each other. You deal with the feeling of basically going in and obliterating a part of your painting like, how do you justify that in your mind? Because you put a lot of work into those, yeah. those elements, and how do you, it's a great question, how do you deal with that? Well, if for, yeah, you have to just let go, because you want the painting to work. And if it's not going to work with all of that, all that stuff, it was just too much going on. I had to get rid of it. And, yeah, it was some of it was hard to get rid of because I really liked those some of those little elements in there, but I just um, let go. You know, you just have you can't be too you can't be too attached to anything because it might change within five minutes. So, like my husband looked at this painting, this painting, and he said, "Oh, I love that poem. I love this painting." He said, "It's such a happy painting. It's got bright, bright." colors and I said don't get too attached because it won't look like this in 10 minutes <laughs> and it won't so we'll be working on that painting today so that's a thing with artists um, we hear a lot that you don't want your paintings to be too precious where you're more concerned about the time you put into it versus letting it evolve into a, 
a battery. Pack. That's right. You can't get attached because uh, it won't. It, if you keep every element in there, like this is, I think, a, way too busy for me right now. And so we're going to work on that next, as a matter of fact. So what I do is very often I make my stencils, and I decided to make this crazy stencil to help with this painting because I am not happy with this painting. So I thought I would um, show you what my next step would be in this creative process. So I'm going to lay this stencil on top and, and then paint. I'm putting tape underneath so that it doesn't move around. What kind of paint, uh, tape are you using, Barry? Tape? Yeah. This is the like painter's tape? No, this is that uh, frog's tape. Okay, so it won't yeah. lift your, your paint. It, it's a very light, It's the they have two kinds. One is a heavier and one is a this light one, which is much easier to, you know, take off. And it won't take your paint with it. No, <laughs> your paint. right, exactly. So this, here we go. So cool, Barb. I love that shape you created. I just went like this and just cut it out because you have to be re relaxed. I use a lot of these meat um, <laughs> trays as palettes. Recycling. Yeah. The ultimate recycling. I thought I'd use white because there are a lot of colors in here already. And um, I thought if I use white, even if I don't want the white on there, I can always tint over it and change the color. And when I use stencils, I use rollers just to make uh, it more even. Okay, and this is what I'm gonna do. See, I'm getting rid of some of this busy stuff. And that's acrylic paint? This is acrylic, it's golden, and it's the more fluid one. Uh, sometimes I use this thicker oh. paint. I like when I blend. Oh, okay. I like to use the thicker one. Does this dry faster than the thicker one? Too? This, yes, it does because it's so light. We are social distancing. <laughs> yes, we are. We didn't hug, which was very hard to do. <laughs> Sometimes, uh, while the paint is still wet, I'll just take some of this and make some lines in there just for interest. Okay, now we can take this off. Oops. Cool. And now I think it's a little bit more interesting. So we'll let that dry and then we'll work on that again. So this is, this particular one is the first layer of paint that I put on a painting. So this I just started last night and I just threw some of this on because I wanted to show you how you can cover this And when this dries, I can sand this down and these lines will show through. I'll just... The so blue this. lines? Yeah. So I've covered it right now. Uh-huh. Uh, and when it dries, I'll just take a piece of sandpaper and start sanding down. So a lot of my paintings have sanding. You can see like this uh, had a layer of blue on top and I sanded it down to, to make some of this lighter blue shine through. I do a lot of sanding and then repainting and sanding and repainting. This is sanded over here. There's so many layers. Yeah. It's very, how about how many layers do you think you, on average, or maybe there's no average? There is a, uh, it's probably about six layers of different things that I do. Uh, you know, I let something dry, 
come back to it um, and then add things and just keep going. I mean, I've got a whole stack of stencils. I've got stamps that I make using this sponge uh, paper. Have you ever seen this uh -uh. at Michael's? This, it's like it comes in sheets. Oh, so I cut them out and glue them on here. On a block. On a block. So you can see, like some of these stencils were from this. Very cool. On the other side. I get started with things like ideas that come to me. Like maybe I need something interesting here because I want to keep some of this. I don't want to keep all of it. I think it's pretty ugly right now, but. Um, Maybe I've done it some square stenciling and some, and maybe I'll just uh, freeform some shapes. Maybe I should do that. So, I've got this blue, which has some of that blue in there, and I might just put in some shapes now. This may not work, but that's you have to have guts. That's the risk. You gotta have guts. <laughs> that's right. So I've done a shape here. I'm gonna do another shape somewhere else because I'll do them here. And I'll make it a different size just because it would be too boring to keep the same shape. How long did it take you to develop this style or while you're doing that? Um, I think my style is always developing. Um, I don't know if I... I mean, my style has evolved over time. And... It's certainly not the same this year that it was last year. And um, so I think it's taken me, what, 70 years to develop my style. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I uh, studied art in college and uh, on the East Coast. And um, I've taken many classes at the Art Institute. You know, I've gone to Harper College taking classes. So I have a certificate of painting in, at the Art Institute and a certificate of drawing. So I just, I keep going. I still go. I think there's always room for learning and, uh, you know, I'll just always be growing. So it's awesome. Yeah. All right. So how do you know when a painting is done is a question people ask me a lot. I don't always know if a painting is done, but when I look at a painting and feel like it's doing everything I want it to do, then I know it's done. So, for instance, I knew this painting was not done. It just didn't feel finished to me. It didn't feel like it said anything to me. Now, this painting, once I put that blue in there, felt really done to me. I think it's just a feeling. It's like a painting has to have balance, it has to have interest, it has to have mystery. And if you look at it, I, I want my audience to look at my paintings and say, well, gosh, how did she do that? You know, that looks really confusing. I don't know how she, that, that's not painted on there. Um, so there's got to be balance and line and interesting color and variation and all those things when they all fall into place it works for me and that's when i know i can put my signature at the bottom and say we're done beautiful so uh, other questions that people ask me does it get lonely Painting all day by yourself in this beautiful <laughs> studio. People have, asked me, people have asked me, how has this COVID-19 thing affected you uh, as far as painting goes? And I say it really hasn't, other than it gives me no excuse not to be in my studio. So every day I 
you know, I come in here and work on something. Um, so does it get lonely? Not if I'm really involved in the painting. I uh, know, and I'm in a different place. I'm in a totally different zone, and I am loving it. So that's to me is what inspiration is when you get so involved in a painting that you don't even know what time of the day it is, or you don't get hungry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so no, I don't get lonely in the studio. But every once in a while, I think it's time to meet some friends. I think let's have lunch. <laughs> yeah. Right. Do you feel the really duty? Yeah, I I feel like you, like you say you get in that zone, and uh, it seems like you're you're having a conversation in your head, ongoing, making decisions. Does this work with this? Does this work with that? Uh, how can I improve it? And so it's very busy yeah. in your head. Yeah. So you don't really feel alone, but uh, it does take you out of uh, your data, your usual uh, environment, and you're plunged into something different. And and that's something for every everyone. Uh, I think should have some kind of an escape. <laughs> so this is a really good for you. Yeah, I agree. Um, what's the hardest part of creating a painting is a question people ask me. Um, probably the hardest part for my painting is right before it's finished. Looking at something and saying, okay, are you done? And that, that's really hard because my inner voice tells me there's something missing and I don't always know what that is. So sometimes you keep working at a painting and you kind of overdo it and that's the end of that painting. Uh, so it's really uh, takes courage to get in there and keep working on it when you know you might just screw it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To this now, uh, I don't know. I, I would have to look at that for a while and see what it needs. Um, so, Barb, at some point, will you take that work and put it up on the wall so you yeah. can see it yeah. vertical and sit in your chair here exactly. with a glass of wine? <laughs> and I will turn a painting around to, to see whether it looks better upside down or whether it works both ways. Like, sometimes I'm thinking that might, that's kind of a nice way of looking at it, this way. So, so it's going from a vertical to a horizontal. Right. right. Or landscape mode versus portrait. Right. So we're going to talk about this painting right here. <clears throat> this is also one that I did during this COVID time period. And um, one of the questions was how much of this is, can you ask yes. that question, Judy? So Courtney asked, what part of you does this painting reflect? Like, why do you like the imagery of the link circles? Oh, different. That was, that was the other one. one. But what about this? But one? in this painting, how much of this is me? I think all of it is me. All of these are me. Um, I love circles, so I use circles all the time. I don't know why. I just love them. Mm -hmm. um, and I... I, use, I start out with lots of circles, always. And then part of the thought process in what I do next with my painting is, are there too many circles? And if there are, when do the straight lines come in? So that's when I come in with these shapes. <clears throat> um, originally, all of these were bright red. And I thought with this being the focal point, which is what I wanted, I need to do something about these to push them further back so that this becomes the focal point. <clears throat> so I changed the color of these. At first they were blue and then I put some darker red there. Um, these um, shapes, I love this shape too. It's like this continuous line. Um, and I can show you how I do that. That's pretty an interesting process um, because I can just do it right on here. There you go. When you're out, I'll just show you what I do. And then I'll do a smaller version. <clears throat> so what I do is I I 
I just take um, a piece of paper. Of course, it's not going to work. <laughs> it never works. <laughs> I do this on a piece of paper and then I take it and spread it out. Like so what's the difference between just doing it that way? Applying because it then you can use it again ah, and repeat it clever. in another area. Nice. And just keep, so I keep doing that and then eventually I'll paint over it all. But until it's no longer, see? That's so neat. That's cool, right? Yeah. It's called mono print. Nice. So, um, this, back to this painting. Uh, so much of this, even though this is really busy, I think it still works. Because you have this wonderful colored focal point, and you have all these interesting things going on. Your eye moves around. So I think a lot of people are intimidated by abstract art because they don't understand it. And I think if you just can look at a painting and instead of trying to analyze it and trying to find things in it, just enjoy it. Just you know, see what you like about it. Is it the colors? Are they the shapes? Does something remind you of something? I think if a, if a painting speaks to you for whatever reason, and you don't even have to verbalize the reason, <clears throat> then I think you can appreciate art, appreciate abstract art. So um, there is, for me, this painting works because there's balance. Your eye moves around the whole painting, and I think that's important, especially in abstract art, to have, to start at one point, and that might be your focal point, and it, your eye tends to move around the whole area. And that makes it interesting. I think all these little, even though they're not obvious, there's a lot of intrigue in there. There's this little yellow thing and some lines. This painting is called it just takes one. And um, I did this also during the COVID-19. And as you can see, Judy pointed out, <laughs> oh, I get it. It just <laughs> takes one. <laughs> so I thought I would share that one with you guys too. And uh, similar techniques used throughout I like to use a lot of uh, crayon and markers that uh, just have sort of a background line to it. I love line making. Um, this is pencil. And um, similar color palette, I think I used very much the same colors in all of these paintings. But, uh, you know, just changing the colors around by adding other things, other colors to the colors but definitely the same palette. All right, we're gonna talk a bit about my studio and what, this, this was built as a studio. Um, it's built so that if I ever leave, it can be used as a garage, but so these doors open. In the spring, I open these out wide. And I have a screen that pulls out, which is kind of cool. So right now it's cold, but um, also on these walls, I have this is special board that I can just stick pins in. So I can take these paintings don't normally stay up here. These are just for, for the purpose of this video. But I have all of these pins that hold it in place. And um, this is a special board that is used in studios that um, can do that. Well, this concludes our visit to my studio. And I wanted to thank the Barrington White House for inviting me to do this. This was a lot of fun. And uh, I want to encourage you to watch 
uh, on the 21st when Judy comes back to my studio because she is in transition right now and, and has had to let go of her studio. So we will be filming here again, but with all of Judy's things on the wall. So looking thank forward you. to that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Barb. So thank you very much for watching. So, Barb, the first question we have here is, um, they're saying amazing stuff to watch and understand your process. Are you more excited when you start a project with the physical production and seeing that come together? Or do you more enjoy seeing your mental image, internal feeling emerge as that visual product? Uh, yeah, definitely. Definitely while, no, it's always very hard to start a painting, to stare at a blank canvas and just say, oh, what do I do now? But halfway through, I start to get that rush of something's happening now, and this is really exciting, and I can't wait to keep going with it. Very nice. Uh, another one we have here is about the lighting conditions. It says, do you only work during the day with natural light, or do you also work at night? with the artificial light or the light that will be used when the piece is hung? Actually, there's a time of the day where it doesn't, the studio, those skylights are sometimes too, too much sun comes in. And that's in the late afternoon. But um, most of the time, uh, the morning is a good time to work. And of course at night it's great because then I just have the um, fluorescent lighting uh, that works. But yes, I, I, had the op I actually had the option of putting a screen on the, um, on the skylights and I wish I had done that because there are times of the day when there's too much sun coming in. Awesome. Yeah, I do wish everybody there could have gotten a, a better tour of your studio. Um, it, it really was a beautiful space to be in and, and an awesome, uh, uh, well-deserved for somebody of your skill. Uh, we do have a question here. Do you choose colors based on your mood? And how do you determine a color palette? Yeah, um, uh, I think the colors that I pick, I just start with one color. And sometimes I try to challenge myself because I tend to gravitate towards the same colors. So uh, on a more brave day, I will pick colors that I normally would not ever work with. And um, so it depends on how challenging I feel that day. Very nice. Um, I think this question is asking about how you choose uh, the mediums you're working with. So. Um, we obviously saw you doing work with acrylic, but uh, we saw in the background some charcoal and some, I know that you are a watercolor painter as well. Uh, maybe you could talk about that a little bit. Yeah, most recently I am working more with acrylics. I have worked with everything. I mean, I've taken drawing classes when I got my certificate uh, at the Art Institute of Chicago. Uh, then I was using a lot of charcoal and a lot of pencil and a lot of, you know, that depends on the classes I'm taking also. But most recently I've been working with acrylics and I, when I start using collage, it's when I'm confused about a painting and I don't know which way to go, then I'll just start adding all these other elements to it and hope that there's, uh, you know, something interesting comes out of it. Was muted there myself. Um, we've got uh, some questions about uh, the pens and different kind of pencils uh, you use. You mentioned crayons as well, I believe. Was there um, anything that you, you know, is there a strategy you use when going into those? Um, we watched Steve Butchich last week with his um, plein air painting where he kind of goes in first with those. 
and then finishes with paint. Do you follow a similar technique at all? Yeah, I'm always throwing lines in there. You know, so when I just throw painting, uh, start with paint, then I will go in and, and use crayon or china markers. I use a lot of, I just discovered different colors in china markers, which I'm so excited about. But, um, and very often I'll cover those lines, but uh, at the end I'll go back in and, and put them in again. Yeah, I just love mark making. So uh, yeah, that's what I do. You did talk about normally putting on music as well. There's a couple questions here. What kind of music do you listen to? Um, and that does that uh, change depending on maybe your mood and the, the you know conditions outside and your color palette? No, it, it doesn't. Um, I have my little iPod with a thousand songs on it and I just do a shuffle. So if I don't like something, I'll you know fast forward it. But most, it's a variety of everything. I mean, I've got Eric Clapton on there. I've got The Doors. I've got um, Enya. I've got, you know, the, uh, I can't even name them right now, but everybody. And, you know, even my son, who who's a musician, I've got a lot of his music on there. But it doesn't yeah. influence. It doesn't really influence my work so much. Maybe uh, unconsciously it does, but uh, it doesn't make me paint a certain way to listen to certain music. Well, I want to really quickly uh, share my screen again because even though I said um, you uh, at the very end there, we had seen that um, the update on this painting that you had demonstrated with that big white curving mass through it. Um, you sent us another image today. Uh, so the, the right side here, if people can see that, is what we uh, got today. And I, I did notice that your signature on it is on it now. Does that mean it's finished? That usually means it's finished, yeah. Um, yes, I added, so you can see that the change, I changed the color of the circles for I felt the, the painting on the left, I felt that those round shapes, those circles were all within the frame, within the four uh, sides of the painting and nothing was really taking my eye off the painting, uh, which as I've said before, I really like it when your eye follows the whole painting. So I thought, well, I, I probably need to change the color of those circles. And so I did that. And now I feel like there's a little bit more movement. And then I, at the end, I added those figure eight uh, just to give it a little depth uh, so that now there are a few more layers on top. So I felt like finally that was fit. Now I feel like it's finished. So I put my signature on there. Great, we'll go back to you now. Um, question about your stencils. How did you get that idea for that technique? Uh, well, that's an interesting question. I don't know how I got that idea. I've been doing it for so many years. Um, no, I don't know. I probably learned it somewhere in one of my classes. Um, well, there are stencils out there, which I've always used other people's stencils. And I thought, you know, it's kind of cheating to use somebody else's stencil. So I started making my own. I think that's probably how it evolved. The, the mother of necessity or the mother of uh, right. invention is necessity, right? So you couldn't find that exact one you were looking for. And I'm sure you, you exactly. went in and, and made it right there. Um, question, have you ever uh, enjoyed a work you created that was fueled by a negative emotion of anger or frustration, or does that uh, your best work come out with uh, positive thoughts and energy? I think, yes, I don't paint when I'm angry. I, it's not the place I go to. For, I'm not angry that, that often, but when I am angry, I think I tend to internalize and don't feel very creative when 
that emotion is there. So most of my painting is done when I'm not angry. And then a question about what appeals to you about the abstract art more than uh, realism or landscape, still life, uh, anything like that? I think um, I like that surprise element in uh, abstract art. I think there's so much of my brain that comes out on uh, a paper or a canvas that it even surprises me. So, you know, very often I will finish a painting and a few weeks later I'll look at that and think, wow, I did that, you know, kind of even surprises me. So I, that's what I like about abstract art. We have one of those classic um, questions here now. Okay. What artist, living or dead, would you have lunch with? And I assume this is after the uh, pandemic uh, subsides here so that we can get more than uh, six feet away from them. Uh, well, uh, I love Louise Nevelson. I love de Koenig. Robert Rauschenberg probably is gonna be my top choice there. Well, that's very great. Uh, thank you so much for doing this. Um, the rest of our questions here are just praise for you and your studio and all of the uh, wonderful work you did here. And I think uh, thank you. Judy may have commented here. Someone is praising her in the comments. So I think she may have commented on here. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so um, thank you so much. And we will be back next week with Judy, who you saw in this video. Um, so think of any questions, and if you do have anything, um, maybe you can email it in to us and we'll uh, forward it on. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it.